They will look at the one they have pierced, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On the day of the particular judgment, that moment after death, the throne of God's mercy opens up for all human beings. In an instant, man will receive illumination in his spirit and will know what eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. He will have an encounter with God and for a moment he will enter into his omnipotence, omnipresence and omniscience and all his life will appear before him. Just as in a film, he will find everything he did during his life, the good and the bad. He will also understand the love of God and the purpose for which he was created. With the eyes of God, the soul will see the love of God so great that he sent his son Jesus to give us his life for that disobedience he committed in his rebellion. With the same wisdom of God, he will understand how much he offended him during his life and how much he owes him. He will know exactly what price he has to pay for his sin, and he will see Jesus crucified and pierced. He will understand that he is not in a state of purity to enter heaven, and he will also know if he is destined for eternal damnation. The soul will feel pain at having offended God to the point of piercing him with his sin. God will make the soul of man see clearly how much he has loved him and how in his infinite goodness he sent Jesus to pay for his sins. Those who came to know Jesus during their lives, who lived in repentance for their sins, will feel great joy in having this encounter with Jesus, because during their lives they felt pain for having offended him, and in that moment they will feel great gratitude for feeling saved. Those who met him through Christianity and yet did not care much for the salvation that God was suffering, would be tempted by the devil to continue to defy God, and if they do not feel repentance at that time, the throne of mercy will be close to them, and they will receive their condemnation. Those who during their life did not do penance for their sins, those who did not make reparation, those who did not practice charity and did not achieve purification of their souls in life, will understand that God in His mercy allows them to enter purgatory, to be purified in the fire of divine love. Those who even though they were not Christians, even if they were Indians far from civilization, will also see Jesus crucified, and will understand all the love of God for them that grants salvation to all those who believe and accept the Lord as their Lord, God, King and Savior. If these souls repent and accept Jesus, they will have eternal salvation although they will have to pay purification, but if they do not do so, they will be condemned. Those who throughout their lives live for sin, who continually offended God and who did not love their neighbor, will see Jesus, and they will see also their place in hell. Their pride will be such that if they do not admit that God has given them a Savior, 
and asking for forgiveness. Then they will be eternally condemned. Then all human beings, regardless of race, culture or religion, will see the one whom they have pierced and will understand that each one of us is guilty of the death of the firstborn of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the most important moment in the life of any soul. For when the soul was created, it saw for a moment the greatness of God in that pristine purity of the beginning of existence. God embraced it as a child. But then he removed that instant from his memory to send him out into the world to know God in obedience, to love and to serve him. God created us pure, immortal, and eternal. But the sin of our first parents offended God in such a way that when we came into the world, we came to be tested in God's obedience. And we have all disobeyed, with the exception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who, because she did not sin at the end of her life on earth, was assumed in body and soul into heaven. Since the punishment of sin is the death of the body, which must return to the dust from which it came. But that punishment is partially applied to the body that returns to dust through putrefaction. On the other hand, the soul being an ethereal body, temple of the spirit that God gives us, is also subject to obedience and punishment. And for this reason, at the end of its purpose on earth, at the moment of death, when it inevitably detaches itself from the body, it enters that new spiritual dimension where it has its encounter with God to respond in its particular judgment for its existence on earth. The soul is a mirror that reflects the image of God, but during life the soul stains that mirror with sin and darkness. The blood of Christ purifies the soul and allows it to reflect the image of God again. But those who did not succeed in purifying themselves totally during their life will need the fire of divine love to be purified. During the passion, agony and death of Jesus, the soul of Jesus burnt with the fire of divine love, because in that love he saw all the souls and suffered for them. He saw how all the damned souls were torn from his soul to throw themselves into the eternal fire of eternal death. Jesus crucified is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. On the cross, Jesus had the victory of the redemption of mankind. He overcame death, the devil, the world, and the flesh. From there, Jesus, in his omnipotence and omnipresence as God, is in all the masses that are being offered that have been offered and that will be ever offered equally in all the consecrated hosts, in all the blessed, in the blessed sacrament of the altar, Jesus transcends time, matter and distance. And from the cross, Jesus offers his personal sacrifice for rich human being and gives us salvation. This is why in the sacraments of the church, we have those personal encounters with Jesus, thanks to the priesthood. Jesus has revealed to me that we can purify our souls in the fire of divine love, even without entering purgatory. This purifying fire is found in his holy wounds, blood, water, sorrows, tears and anguishes, and in those of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus explains to me, that when he enters into us, 
He gives us his body, blood, soul, and divinity. But we must leave the Holy Eucharist in such a way that we also enter into him in the spirit. We must enter into his holy wounds, blood, water, sorrows, tears, and anguishes, and those of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus invites us, as in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, to enter into that moment of his death. There he gives us his spirit of grace in prayer, so that we may understand that it is we who have pierced him. Everyone will see the one whom they have pierced, says the word. If we leave the Holy Eucharist and follow these instructions, as Jesus says, we will see him before our death, and thus we will be purified. Jesus is my Lord, God, and personal Savior. I must understand that it was me who crucified Jesus. It was not the nails, nor the soldiers, nor Pilate, nor the Jews. It was me who crucified Jesus with my sins. I scourged him with my impurity. I crowned him with thorns, with my pride. I denied him. I insulted him. I spat on him. I beat him. I made him bear the burden of my sins on the cross. And with my sins, I caused him to die. And even after his death, knowing all that I did for him, I pierced his heart with my indifference. Poor me! If it were not for the infinite mercy of Jesus, who has compassion on me and grants me repentance. Jesus wants me to live crucified with him. So did spiritually the Virgin Mary, St. John the Apostle, Mary Magdalene, and the holy women on Calvary. It is only on the cross that we find holiness. It is there that we can understand divine mercy. In Jesus crucified, we find Christ's triumphant moment over sin, death, Satan, the world, the devil, and the flesh. Only by living in his crucified body can we receive that fire of divine love that purifies the soul for eternal life. When we receive the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, we should always enter into this triumphant mystery of the life of Jesus. For it is there that Jesus has his victory, and by overcoming death, he offers us also the victory of his resurrection. There is nothing greater on earth, or in heaven, or anywhere else, that we can offer the Eternal Father for the forgiveness of our sins than the holy wounds, blood, water, sorrows, fears, and anguishes, and those of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Jesus revealed to me this prayer, which is called the Golden Prayer. He tells me that we can get anything we ask for as long as we do it with faith, and it is in accordance with the will of the Father. I have called it the Golden Prayer. Offer it with me for any intention you wish. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and precious blood, the soul and divinity of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sorrows of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, our Lady, Sorrowful Mother, Corredentrix of the world. I offer you the holy wounds, precious blood, water, sorrows, tears, and anguishes of Jesus and Mary. I also offer you the merits of all the holy devotions, rosaries, and holy masses that are being offered, have been offered, and will be offered in time and in eternity for the intention of my heart. Dear brother, dear sister, God has destined the moment at the end of our lives to have that encounter with Jesus. But there we will be exposed to his justice instead if we seek that moment now 
that we are alive. We will enjoy the divine mercy that God rejoices in giving us. Galatians chapter 2 verses 19 to 20. For the, for the law I died to the law, so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If I can say, like St. Paul, I am crucified with Christ, it means that my mind and soul will always be there on the cross with Jesus, meditating on the pain caused by my sins and those of all mankind. There I will allow the fire of his divine love to purify me for eternal life. If I can say with St. Paul, it is not I who lives, it is Christ who lives in me. I will be giving credit to Jesus for my life. I will give him my will and allow him as king to reign in my life with his divine will. And when I speak of Jesus, I will always speak about the repentance that leads us to be in the peace of Christ. And like St. Paul, I will also preach Christ crucified, First of Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, share this message, and leave your comments. God bless you.